Hello, I'm Steph. Thank you so much for checking out my channel today. I realize that we are basically at the end of January, but I kept my makeup empties for the whole year of 2020, so I really needed to make this video and share it with you. I definitely feel like I do not have as much here as I did last year. I think this is my third year doing my makeup empties for the year, so I'll link the previous two years down below in case you're interested to see what other products I finished up but let's go ahead and jump into it. I feel like I should warn you that there's probably going to be a lot of outside noise because it is snowing and cars are driving by and there's slush and snow plows and I really want to film this video, so I'm really sorry if that bothers you. First category we're starting with is setting sprays and this is probably like my biggest category. Uh, yeah, one of my biggest categories. So first up, I have this Calm Skin Refreshing Facial Spritz. I got this at Superdrug. I wouldn't qualify this as a setting spray. I more so used it as skincare and it was nice having like an extra little spritz, definitely useful during lockdown. Do not think I would have used this like on a regular basis otherwise. Next empty is from my Project Pan, so if you're interested in that, I will leave the links down below for, I think I only did like three updates in a finale or two updates in a finale, so those videos will be listed down below in case you're interested. But this is the Urban Decay All Nighter. I definitely love this setting spray. I consider it holy grail. I definitely want to have at least one of these in my collection at all times. I think it does a great job of prolonging makeup. Not necessarily my favorite for everyday use because it does have a pretty high alcohol level in it, but definitely does an amazing job of keeping your makeup all day. Next, I have the NYX. This is the matte finish one. Oh my gosh, if I thought the Urban Decay one was high in alcohol, this one is so high. It was so drying. I definitely would not recommend. And lastly, I have this little mini of the Cover FX. This was the mattifying setting spray, and I thought this one did a pretty decent job. Definitely preferred this over the NYX. Next category is primers, and to go with that Cover FX setting spray, I had a little kit, and this was the Cover FX Mattifying Primer. This was also anti-acne, so I really loved it for that because I do suffer with acne, and I like the idea of putting on like a primer that's going to help treat my acne instead of just like throwing on makeup over it. So I liked it for that. I do have other anti-acne primers so I wouldn't repurchase necessarily. Next, I have the Soap and Glory One Heck of a Blot, and again, like I completely use that up, cut it open. I think I was in a project last and I finished it up at the beginning, or it was in a project in 2019, I finished up at the beginning of 2020. Anyways, it, oh, it took so long to go through because you only need such a small amount. I don't know if it really did anything to really help with mattifying and blotting though. And then last, I had this little itty bitty sample size that I cut open and this is from YSL. This is the Instant Moisture Glow. This is their Top Secrets Hydrating and I use this as like kind of a glowy primer and I really liked it for that not that I really need glow but it's kind of nice to kind of switch up my look a little bit next we have foundations and I feel like it's kind of laughable how many foundations I finished up last year because it was only two that being said I like barely wore makeup as we all know but at the beginning of the year I was going strong so the first one I finished up was actually this one this is the Maybelline dream cushion foundation so it opens up like this so there's a mirror here and then you comes with a little poof open it up this way and then you have the product right here and I flipped over the sponge a few times usually you can get more product out if you flip over the sponge and I actually really like this I thought it had a really nice light coverage I really liked the shade of it but just for the price and how quickly you run through it I don't think it's worth it and the other foundation I finished up was the physicians formula this is the healthy foundation and I'm sure you can see all the sides are scraped I took out the stopper like it you can see like all the way to the bottom it smells really weird not bad but like I always thought it smelled kind of like caramelly or like vanilla -y. I don't know it was interesting anyways this was probably one of my favorite foundations so I'm really happy that I was actually able to use this up I heard that this was discontinued I'm not really sure I'm not on the market for any foundations I have a lot and realizing that I only went through two this year makes me definitely not want to purchase any at the moment Next we have concealers. So this first one isn't really a concealer. I think it's more skincare, but I used it as a color corrector. This is from First Aid Beauty. This is the Eye Duty Triple Remedy, and it does come in a shade. So this is the fair medium one. So I cut it open, but also, ugh. so I cut it open so you can see I used everything. And then on top of that, so basically what happens is you squirt it out and then this side is metal and you kind of just go like this under your eye. So it's really cooling. I really did like it. I thought I did a good job of 
color correcting, but I think it's like a bit more expensive than I would want to go for, but I'm happy that I used it up. This next concealer, I almost repurchased immediately after I finished, but I told myself, no, you have too much stuff, don't repurchase it, but I loved it that much that I had to like convince myself not to. At every Sephora sale, I was like, buy it, buy it, no, don't do it, don't do it. And that is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Breakout Full Coverage. Again, this has salicylic acid in it for oily, acne-prone skin. I took out the stopper, completely finished it like there's not a lick of <laughs> makeup left in there, but I love the idea of putting something on my blemishes that was going to actually help treat them and I wasn't going to just be piling makeup onto like open wounds. <laughs> not really open wounds, but like blemishes and pimples like whiteheads. It's just, you don't really want to be piling makeup on because what if it does like pop throughout the day and then all the makeup, I just, I just felt better about putting this on. Maybe it doesn't actually help. Maybe it's still not a good idea to put it on active acne, but it brought me comfort and I really liked it. Next, this is for my project pan. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof, Waterproof Full Coverage Concealer. And again, I took out the stopper, completely finished it up. I'm not sure you're really going to be able to tell though. I hated this. Would not recommend. It is so heavy and drawing and just, I, I have fine lines under my eyes. Every concealer sinks into them. It's just, I know that about myself, but this was the worst defender, so would not recommend. And last in that category, I actually have a color correcting stick. So this was a green one from Essence. And again, I would put this on areas where I was red, maybe um, blemishes. I find that like around here hits red, my chin can get red. So I really liked it for that little bit of color correcting. Not sure I really needed it, but it was nice to use. But I think also just putting on a regular concealer does enough for me. I don't think I have that much redness that I really need a green color corrector. Surprisingly, I only finished one powder this year, but it was a big one. It was a loose powder and it was the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Powder, which comes with 29 grams. So a lot of powder. I took the sifter out, like completely emptied it out. And yeah, I didn't finish a lot of press powders, but I'm really happy that I was actually able to finish up a loose one. I really liked it, and I, I have too many loose powders to even think about purchasing another one. Next, we have a perfume. I finished this up right at the beginning of the year, like maybe like a week into 2020, and this was Prada. It doesn't even have another name on it. It's just this little size. It was Prada. Do I even remember what it smells like? Mm. It honestly smells like a older, more mature scent. Not sure I would go for this again. And again, it was one of those ones where you like dab it on because it doesn't have a spray. So not my favorite form of applying perfume, but I had it in my collection. And I wanted to use it up. This might be one of the proudest things that I finished this year. And it's a mini bronzer. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. I completely finished it up. This took like over a year of use. It's a mini bronzer. It takes so long. Like it just goes to show that like doesn't really matter necessarily the size of the product. It really depends also how it is pressed. Like Too Faced products are so firmly pressed in the pan. I feel like I've heard their eyeshadows take so long to get through. Bronzer took so long she got through. So yeah, I really loved it though. And I'm actually kind of missing it. I have a few other bronzers in my collection and I've been using them, but I'm kind of just like, oh, I kind of really miss the tone of this one. I just feel like nothing is really hitting the spot right now. Next up, I have mascaras, and I know people say three months, six months for a mascara. I kind of use it until I notice that it is flaking or no longer good. I'm not quite sure the order I finish these up in, but this first one here is the Benefit Roller Lash, and I'm trying to even remember my thoughts on it. This is the wand. It's like a synthetic wand, tiny little bristles. Eh, I can't really remember, which kind of goes to show that I wasn't a favorite. Like, I love mascara, so if one isn't really memorable, it's kind of not worth remembering. <laughs> this next mascara is memorable, but for not being good, and that was the e.l.f. Lengthenizing and Volume Mascara. This is in, like, their old packaging, so the formula might have changed, but this is what it looked like. I think this is a natural bristle brush, but it's, like, a weird spiral. I'm not sure if you can tell, and it just really didn't lengthen or volumize. Not a fan. These next two, I absolutely loved. So this one was the YSL Baby Doll Mascara, which I think has been discontinued, which I am like <sighs> sad about, but I'm using another YSL mascara right now. And I'm loving that one too. So I'm kind of like, why is that some good mascaras? Um, anyways, this is also just a synthetic one. Very tiny bristles. Kind of looks similar to the Benefit Roller Lash one, but oh, this and like the formula, it just, my lashes look so beautiful. They look so long and so thick and... Mm, 
It was amazing and I'm really sad that this has been discontinued. Another one that I absolutely loved, this is just a mini but I feel like it really lasted me a long time and this is the Dior Dior Show Mascara. Oh my god, you have to like pull this one, it's not a twist which is like really hard to do. Oh, I just showed this in my last MP. This wand is like so big compared to like the packaging. I just think it's really funny. Anyways, this, this, oh so nice. Lashes, beautiful, so thick and voluminous. I love this like I would actually consider picking this up I really wish high-end mascaras were not my favorite it's not even high-end it's like luxury like really could you not just like there's so many go-ins at the drugstore I don't I'm hoping to find some go-ins at the drugstore but like mm, this one I love it the Dior show oh it's so nice moving on to brow products I finished one brow pencil this year this is from elf this is their brow pencil I think that this is like the two dollar one and this was in the shade natural neutral brown I want to say so it's a bit of a thicker tip I'm not sure if you can tell and it's a pretty waxy formula I really liked it this is like the first style of brow pencil I've ever got I'm not sure if this is the actual first one but I really like it I thought I did a good job of filling in my brows I have pretty thick brows but I do have some scarring like I have a complete like gap in one of my brows I think it's yeah it's this side there's like a huge scar there so this does a really good job of actually like adhering to the skin because I'm not just like drawing it to my hairs I have to actually draw onto my skin and I thought that this did a really good job and I really like this one and I have I think another one in taupe for when I have lighter hair and I think I might even have another one in my class I really like this one and it's so such a good price for brow gels this year I actually finished up two they are both from essence this is the essence make me brow and it has gel fibers in it which I really like to kind of show you what the wand looks like it's very little which is great because you get all over the brow but you don't get product everywhere. I'm using the ABH one now and I hate it. I don't understand why the wand is so big. Brows are so small. It's such a small area. The hairs are so little. Like I don't understand why it's such a big one. It makes such a mess. Anyways, I have two shades because when I had blonder hair this kind of did a good job of lightening up my brows and not making it look too stark. This one is the shade Blondie Brows and this one is the shade Brownie Brows. I feel like this one is pretty dark. Like even when my natural hair color like I still feel like it looks kind of dark but it almost goes for like a bold look so I didn't mind it so much in the winter I kind of like a bolder brow but in the summer I want to like that light and especially when my hair was lighter anyways goes to show I really enjoyed this product that I bought it twice and I actually think I would go out and repurchase this when I kind of shut my current brow down last product for eyes is an eyeliner and I don't know about you but it takes me forever to get through an eyeliner and this was Ooh, which was it? It was the Rimmel Scandalize in Nude and like the tip completely fell out and I really really like this product. I thought it was like really phenomenal. I love a nude eyeliner. If you're interested in what I think is the best nude eyeliner at the drugstore, I have a battle of the nude eyeliners. I'll link that down below and up in the cards in case you're interested, but I really like this one. But I've got enough that I do not need to buy anymore. <laughs> Next is highlighters and two of these I finished up at the very beginning of 2020 and one was at, right at the very end. So this first one is the Cover Effects. This is the Custom Enhancer Drops and this is in the shade Rose Gold. It looks like there's product in but I assure you there is not and I would just mix this in with my foundation because it is way too dark for me to be a highlighter so I would do like um, a little squirt of this with my foundation, mix it in and it was like a very nice glowy look that I really enjoyed. This next one is from Collection. This is the Speedy Highlighter so it was just kind of like a chubby stick like highlighter I would just draw it on and blend it in and I really liked it I'm not sure if there's gonna be like no it is completely dried out but it was such a beautiful shade um what was the shade called it was just a one pearl sheen I really really enjoyed this one kind of sad that I finished it up but I, I have other cream highlighters so it's not the end of the world and then this last one I finished is actually from a palette this is the sleek makeup palette and it's three powders and a cream one and I completely finished up the cream one which I am so happy about because I was kind of worried that it might go off and contaminate the powder one so I'm really happy that I was able to finish up the cream one this year and I wore it for like pretty much every time I did makeup I would do like um foundation then the cream highlighter and then I would put a powder highlighter on top so I had like a really pretty intense highlight but that is how I like to wear highlight. A few kind of miscellaneous items before we finish up with lips. I only finished up or used up or am discarding I don't really know what to say here makeup sponge this is the Morphe one but it, it did um, rip which is why I'm getting rid of it but this lasted so long like base not the 
I mean, it's the only one I used up this year. I think I just replaced it in like October, November. So it lasts me like 10 months without ripping and I wash it every single time I go to use it and it barely stained and it lasted a really long time. I'm super impressed that I actually did pick up another one of these because I just thought it lasted so long. I really enjoyed the shape of it. This like angle here for getting in right in here and the flat side for just like blending in. I just, I just really liked it overall. I thought it was a very good sponge. I also have two nail products. So this first one is not interesting. It's just a Maximum Growth Phase 1 Sally Hansen. I had it for probably like uh, over five years and finished it. So happy about that. And I actually finished a nail polish color, which I've never done before. So super excited about that. And this is the Sephora OPI. It's called Non-Fat Soy Half Cap. And it's just this like nude shade which I kind of not really miss from my collection because I don't have any other nudes. I know it looks like there's stuff on the packaging but I like tipped it over. It, it, it is empty. But yeah now I don't have a nude shade in my collection which I kind of miss. Like I kind of like something like a nude look but I my nails aren't even painted right now. I haven't painted them in like a month so I'm just happy I finished my nail color. And lip products. I actually finished quite a few lip products for not wearing makeup. So these first three are lip balms. So I had a body shop Cranberry Shimmer Lip Balm, which I completely finished up. Happy to get that out. I had it for quite a while. Next was the Sugar Fresh. This was just their regular lip treatment. Again, I dug into that. I really, really liked it, but it is super expensive, so I'm not sure I would repurchase. And on the flip side, this one is so inexpensive. This is the Carmex one. And again, I dug in, and it's a very waxy formula, but I really, really enjoyed it, and I'm happy that I was able to find a place to buy it in Canada. Next is lip glosses. I'm not usually a big lip gloss person, but I got into them this year and just like being at home and being able to reapply them, I actually went through three, which is, I don't know if I even finished one last year, so that goes to show you. Two of them are from Stila. These are the Stila lip glazes, and I finished up the shade Raspberry. You can kind of see a little bit of it right there. And this one was Papaya Pizzazz. Those have been long discontinued. And then the last one I finished up was from CoverGirl. This was the Colorlicious in Melted Toffee. Again, I really liked the shade. It was like a creamy nude. I thought it was beautiful. Don't need to pick up any more lip glosses at the moment, but I actually did really enjoy this one and would like consider picking up again potentially if I used up all of my lip glosses. And I finished up this little lip liner here. This was a, it's a, like no color one. So it's supposed to be like anti-bleed so you can wear it with anything, which made using it really easy because I didn't have to worry about what I was pairing it with. And I actually had another one in my collection, so I was really happy that I finished up this one so I don't actually have a backup of it. And I finished up two colored lip products. So this first one was the Tardiest Lip Paint in Birthday Suit. I think this was the Sephora birthday gift a while ago. I actually really enjoyed it. It was kind of like this type of shade. I thought it was so beautiful. And this is like the only liquid lipstick I've ever finished up and probably ever will finish up because they take so, so, so long. And the other product I finished up is from e.l.f. And this is the lip crayon in just the shade Natural. You can kind of see it there. It is like a mauve shade. I love these types of shades, so it's very easy to finish up. And there you have it. That is all the makeup I finished up in 2020. And the monetary value of that is this. I don't know it off the top of my head. So this is how much I finished. So not too much. I know for a fact it's not that much. I don't, I think it's pretty much less than last year and the year before. I mean, I didn't even use up as much makeup, so how could it be more? But it's not really about the monetary value. It's just kind of exciting to see like how much I did use up and kind of realizing what products I really go through. It's interesting. I finished up so many setting sprays because I feel like in prior years, I've only finished up like one or two. And then foundations and powders is usually something I have more of and like not really this year. But it was like a weird anomaly year and eh. It is what it is. So if you watch the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I know I'm a little bit late doing a wrap up 2020 video now, but I just, like I said, I had all these products and I really wanted to share it with you. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this in 2021. Let me know down below in the comments if that is something you'd actually be interested in seeing or if I can stop hoarding my empties, which I know Josh would really appreciate. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are. Bye. Mm -hmm.